My name is Janet Cross. I'm the Associate Dean for the Graduate and Medical Scientist Training Programs here in the University of Virginia School of Medicine. It is my absolute pleasure to welcome you all here this afternoon for our 2023 BIMS Hooding Ceremony. Um, I, of course, want to welcome our faculty and students who are here to honor today. I also want to welcome all of the families who've traveled from near and far to celebrate this special occasion with your students. All of the friends who took time out of their lovely Sunday morning to be here with us, and most of all, our graduates. Um, it is such a, an honor to be here. This event is all of our favorites of our academic year. Um, we are thrilled to be here in person to celebrate the achievements of our grads, though I do want to also offer a warm welcome to those who are joining us virtually who could not be here with us today in person. It is wonderful to have you all here this morning. Um, without further ado, I'm going to introduce our, our Dean, Melina Kibbe. Um, it is my honor to introduce her. She is the Dean of our School of Medicine. Um, she began her five-year her five-year appointment at the UVA School of Medicine in 2021. She is also the Chief Health Affairs Officer for the University of Virginia Health System. Um, her formal uh, professorship is the James Carroll Flippin Professor of Medical Sciences, but she's also a professor of surgery and biomedical engineering. So, uh, Dr. Kibbe has been a tremendous supporter of our graduate programs, both in ways that are probably invisible to many of you, and in some ways, ways that have impacted our spring graduates in, in tangible ways. So, it's my pleasure to welcome Dean Kibbe, and I hope you will join me in doing so. So hello everyone, good afternoon, and good afternoon to our faculty who are here, the parents, the family, and of course, our graduating class of 2023. Congratulations on this really exciting occasion because today marks a day of great achievement and celebration. Congratulations for the class of 2023. So to the parents and the family members, so I really want to thank you for the support and guidance that you have all provided our students throughout their graduate studies. You should be incredibly proud of them as they have chosen a meaningful and profound profession. I am confident that they will go on to have an impact with their careers as scientists. So I just really want to thank you all for being here today and supporting them on this journey. Oh, this is a clip. Can I just use this? Oh, OK. I cannot use the clip. I was about to take off with it. All right, so now to our graduates. Congratulations on this incredible achievement. You have been on an amazing journey of scientific inquiry. Today, you receive your doctoral degree, your PhD, which acknowledges all of your accomplishments to date as a scientist. It also acknowledges that you're about to embark on a lifelong career of curiosity, a voyage of discovery, and a life of innovation. So congratulations, you've chosen well. Now, as we celebrate your graduation, I would like to share some advice to help you become the best scientist that you can be. As you may know, I am also a very proud scientist. So the advice I'm going to share with you is based on my own experiences over the years as a researcher. My advice comes in the form of three short stories <laughs> with lessons in each. I hope that these stories inspire you and remind you that the pursuit of scientific knowledge to advance medical care through experimentation is a great privilege and an amazing gift. Lesson number one, small discoveries can have a big impact. 
So as a scientist, we are often in search of great discoveries, but sometimes the smallest of the discoveries are the ones that can have the biggest impact. So early in my own career, I was conducting research to determine how nitric oxide was regulating certain intracellular signaling pathways in vascular cells. As part of the research, I designed experiments using knockout cells. For those of the rest of you in the audience who are not scientists, a knockout cell is basically a cell that's been genetically modified to have a specific gene knocked out or missing, hence the term. So we do this so that we can study the function of that gene or its protein and the role within the cell. So I designed my experiments and I started treating the normal and the knockout cells with nitric oxide. But as I was treating the cells, the nitric oxide kept killing the knockout cells, which was not what I was expecting. So after many weeks of troubleshooting the experiment, changing different treatment conditions, different variables, and with my frustration really growing, finally, a light bulb went off. And it dawned on me what was going on. The nitric oxide was killing the knockout cells. And it wasn't an accident. I couldn't believe that it took me that long to realize what was right in front of me. The reason it took so long to see this important finding is I was really focused on my hypothesis and on the experiments right in front of me. In scientific investigation, sometimes we're so focused on the end result that we forget the journey of exploration and discovery. So this story is to remind you to be open to new possibilities and unexpected findings, however big or small they might be. Sometimes the smallest of findings can take your research into entirely new directions. For me, and this story, I ended up completely abandoning my original hypothesis. The findings of the, of the nitric oxide killing those knockout cells led to an entirely different line of investigation that ended up getting funding and really provided important insights into how nitric oxide was regulating cell death in certain vascular cells. This was a long time ago, in the 90s. But I tell you this story to be open to the smallest of findings. And do not be set on a certain outcome, because this is science. Small discoveries can have a big impact. Lesson number two, let failure be a powerful motivator. As you know, we all know, research can be very rewarding. But research can also be very difficult and challenging. Throughout your scientific career, there will be times of exhilaration and despair, hope and doubt, success and definitely failure. We all have them. All of the scientists in this room have had them. And you will too. So this next story, is about my very first NIH R01 application. So for the families in the audience, an NIH R01 grant is a type of grant that's awarded by the National Institutes of Health. And it's a grant awarded to independent investigators for their research. It's very prestigious. And it's the type of grant that all investigators in academic settings try to secure early in their career. In a way, securing an NIH R01 grant is almost like a rite of passage that proves to the research community that you are a scientist capable of conducting impactful research. Okay, so you get it. It's a pretty big deal. And for the families here who are gonna go through our graduates doing this, just remember my words and be supportive. Well, I submitted my very first R01 application. I was really excited about the science, but of course anxious about securing the funding, as you all will be as well. Well, 
I still remember the day, and I even remember where I was, because it was that kind of a day, when my score came through. There was no score, none. My grant was triaged, not even discussed. So for the rest of the audience, that means the bottom 50th percentile of the pack. I still remember the feelings of how devastated I was. Statistically, you all will face the same challenge at some point in your career. And it's how you react and how you cope that will define your career as a scientist. I could have thrown in the towel right then and there. I was devastated, but I didn't. I believed in the research that I was doing. So I picked myself back up and I got a lot of help from many mentors and sponsors all around the country. I rewrote the entire grant and it went through like 30 revisions before I resubmitted it. Well, guess what happened? You cannot make this up. The grant ended up getting a perfect score of 10. I still can't believe that and that that happened to me, going from triage to 10. So in research, the ability to overcome setbacks and barriers, even when the work is hard, is crucial. How do you keep going? Persistence, believing in yourselves, focus, curiosity, skepticism, and rigorous inquiry. These will be your constant companions as a scientist. So be open, excuse me. Most of all, learn from your failures and persevere. Let failure push you to be better. Take a step back, reflect, regroup, and determine what steps you need to take to overcome that failure. While working to improve the incandescent light, which took many, many years, Thomas Edison said, I haven't failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. So let failure be a powerful motivator. You will be a better scientist for it. Lesson number three. Be open to opportunities and embrace collaboration. So imagine that one day your research findings might advance the understanding of human disease or be translated into state-of-the-art clinical care or even more profound, save a life. It's remarkable to think that sitting among all of you right now might be a future Nobel laureate or Alaska Prize winner. To get there means conducting highly innovative and impactful research. But it's hard to do that as an island by yourself. So I urge you to be open to new opportunities and new collaborations as some of the best and most innovative science is produced through multidisciplinary collaborations. Well, several years ago, one of my own postdocs was presenting our research on targeted nanotherapeutics to prevent restenosis at a national meeting, standard national meeting. After the talk, a trauma surgeon came up to me from another institution across the country and asked me, if my targeted therapies could be used to stop bleeding. So I was like, what? Totally not my area of research. But he was persistent. He pointed out to me that hemorrhage is the number one cause of death of our soldiers, the second leading cause of death in civilian trauma. So I became a little bit more intrigued. But again, hemorrhage was completely far from my own field of research, way out in left field. What did I know about hemorrhage? I could have thanked him for the really cool idea, and I could have kept pursuing my own research, staying in my own comfort zone. 
However, I did not. So after talking with this trauma surgeon for a while, I realized that we could explore it together. This one conversation, a true chance meeting, led to a decade-long partnership and an entirely new line of research for my lab. And all of this happened because of one simple question from a trauma surgeon after a conference presentation. So I believe that being open to new opportunities and collaborations helps to drive innovation, strengthens the science that we produce, and the outcomes that we achieve. The challenges we face in medicine can't be solved by one scientist alone. We must be great and good collaborators, especially if we're to achieve new breakthroughs in the field of medicine that will make a difference in people's lives. Be open to opportunities and embrace collaboration. So to recap, those three lessons, small discoveries can have a big impact. Let failure be a powerful motivator and be open to opportunities and embrace collaboration. So these three lessons all have one thing in common, the traits that you need to not just be a good scientist, but a great one. Curiosity is crucial for driving new discoveries and uncovering new insights. Patience is key to navigating the slow progress of scientific process in achieving goals. Perseverance, resilience, and adaptability are necessary to overcome the challenges that you will encounter in research. And being bold and courageous and stepping out of your comfort zone will take your science into new and innovative directions. So graduates, I encourage you to remember these three lessons throughout your careers as scientists. Follow your passion. As a wise person once said, choose a job you love and you will never work a day in your life. I hope that you never work a day in your life and that you are inspired to be the best scientists that you can be. Now, as you all leave here today, remember that the pursuit of scientific knowledge through experimentation is a great privilege and an amazing gift. I am confident that your scientific careers will be magnificent and meaningful. Congratulations to the UVA class of 2023, and may you all go on to achieve great things. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dean Kibbe. So we're all here today in the School of Medicine building celebrating the graduates who will earn degrees from the School of Medicine. That wasn't always the case. So we moved our graduate programs into the School of Medicine in 2017. Prior to that, the degrees had been conferred by the Graduate School of Arts and Sciences. Um, that move came with a lot of benefits. Um, one of them was an enhanced sense of identity for our students who feel like they have a home here in the School of Medicine. But probably the greatest benefit of that move was that we inherited a relationship with the Medical Alumni Association here at UVA. Um, that uh, relationship has um, served our program and our graduates in so many ways. Um, the Medical Alumni Association hosts a lab coat ceremony for our students um, in their first year when they transition from their coursework into their laboratory research. Um, they have helped us hold now two BIMS reunions for our alumni. 
Um, and so as our students make the transition from being students to being alumni, we like to give the Medical Alumni Association an opportunity to address you. So joining us um, today is Barry Collins, who is the Executive Director of the UVA Medical Alumni and Medical School Foundation, as well as the Associate Dean for Medical Alumni Affairs. Barry. Um, as alumni now, you're, you're part of an ever-growing delegation of ambassadors for the UVA School of Medicine, and especially our BIMS program. Uh, through networking, professional development, opportunities, uh, our alumni often participate uh, in and benefit from career insights, advice uh, from other alumni and career professionals with the university. So as Dr. Kibbe was saying, you know, collaboration is, is a, a wonderful part of what our graduates do, and that could be, you know, continue with our uh, um, own faculty here. Uh, over the past several years, um, you know, we have collaborated with the, the Graduate Biosciences Society uh, to help support and sponsor opportunities for our students to connect with our alumni uh, at various events, from anywhere from our career panels uh, at the and the, our, of course, our end of year summer social, and as uh, uh, Dr. Cross had mentioned, uh, the two uh, BIMS reunions that we have hosted. Um, your career here at the School of Medicine is, is anything but um, traditional. I, I think especially in the, in the past few years, uh, you know, especially with a global pandemic, uh, but your strength, your resiliency, the grace in which you brought, you know, a pretty challenging time, uh, you know, I think that was pretty remarkable. Uh, and, and again, I'd like to echo some of the earlier comments. I can't wait to see the great things that you're going to do as uh, our graduates from this school. Um, and graduating, you know, and receiving your diploma today with great sense of pride, you know, it does not mean that the time with the university is over. Um, and getting involved in your alumni association really, you know, can provide those connections that uh, we had talked about, uh, career services, alumni networks, um, and really the opportunity to help the students that are going to come after you. Uh, so, uh, being an alumnus and receiving all the perks that, you know, come along with, uh, you know, this, it, it's a two-way street, and we really look at uh, alumni participation as being critical uh, to, you know, building and maintaining this strong sense of community here at the School of Medicine. So, I, you know, my charge, I guess, to our graduates today really is to, you know, remain an active member of the UVA School of Medicine and BIMS communities. Um, stay connected, you know, uh, share your uh, updates, your, your personal and professional information. Um, you'll start to receive, of course, all of our communications, and we would love to see all the wonderful things that you're be, uh, doing as uh, career professionals uh, uh, in, in those publications as well. Uh, get involved. A uh, number of you have benefited from the things like our career panels, our reunions, and, and been able to connect uh, with our alumni. So, so participate in, in our events. We have regional events. We have events here in Charlottesville. Um, we also uh, um, have awards specifically for our PhD program. Uh, so there's an early career uh, achievement award and then our biomedical sciences uh, achievement award as well too. And we just uh, awarded those at our uh, most recent reunion. So think of your colleagues uh, that you're working with over the years. Uh, nominate them. You can nominate yourself uh, for those as well, too. But uh, my message to you uh, today is stay connected. Uh, we really, really look forward to a bright future with all of you. You've done wonderful things here um, in, in the training program, and we, we look forward to working with you continuously. Thank you. Thank you so much, Barry. So I want to take a, an opportunity on behalf of the faculty here in the School of Medicine um, to follow the remarks from Dean Kibbe and from Barry Collins um, by saying just a few personal words to our graduates. Um, first of all, we're incredibly proud of you. So you have become, you have undergone such a transformation over the last several years. You joined our biomedical sciences graduate program a few years ago. Um, it varies by student. Um, I hope that you'll take some time today and over the next few weeks to reflect on the incredible transformation that you have undergone during the time that you've been here, not only as a scientist, but as a person as well. 
We all know that graduate school is really, really hard. As a first generation college student, I didn't have people in my family who understood that, and I suspect the same may be true for some of you in the room. But your families have now lived through this graduate school experience, so I firmly believe that everyone in this room knows that graduate school is hard. Um, the challenges at times can seem somewhat insurmountable. We probably all had a moment in our graduate career where we just didn't think this was gonna work out for us. And yet, all we, we're all here today. These challenges have been even larger, I would say, during your tenure here in the program. Those of you who are up on the lawn today heard President Ryan and um, our invited speaker reiterate some of the extra challenges that have happened in the time that this group of students has been in our graduate program. Um, obviously, the global pandemic had a huge impact on trajectories, um, time in the lab, et cetera. And so I would argue that the impact of the pandemic and other world and local events has um, demanded extra resilience from this group of students. Your fortitude is impressive. Your family and friends have lived through these times with you and recognize how meeting these challenges have helped you to become the people that you are today. I hope that you see it too. In fact, I hope that you can see everything that your family and friends see. Young men and women embarking on the next phase of their life with confidence. And I hope that you can see what your mentors, the other faculty, your fellow students, and I see. How you have evolved into true colleagues and experts in your fields, and with the tremendous potential to take on the world. Which brings me to the second point I want to make. I know that I speak for all of the faculty in the audience when I say that your journey's not over. While you will all likely follow very different paths, we're confident that you'll take the training that you received here and use it to do rewarding and impactful things. With that, it's nearing time for our main event, the ceremonial hooding of our graduates. For those who have no idea what I'm talking about when I say hood, let me turn the podium over to our Assistant Dean for Graduate Research and Training, Dr. Adrian Holme, uh, who's also an Associate Professor of Cell Biology, and he's going to explain this hood to everyone. Great. Thank you, Janet. So uh, thank you. My name is Adrian Halmy. I'm the Assistant Dean for Graduate Research and Training, as Janet mentioned. And again, I want to congratulate all of our graduates this year. And I am particularly honored to be participating in this um, and to tell you a little bit about the symbols of the ceremony that we have here that surround the conferral of a doctorate degree. So the placing of the doctoral hood on a graduate, so that's, that's this thing that's hanging behind my neck here. Um, you know, is a symbol of achieving academic distinction, the academic distinction of advanced degree. And it's a tradition that we continue. So the colorful outfits you see here, this hood and this gown, have much more practical origins. Um, going back to the necessities of, of having warm gowns and a warm hood to keep you warm in the cold halls of European medieval schools and universities. During the Renaissance, the hoods started to take on a more symbolic role and represented the status with distinctive colors and fabrics of the wearer, their rank, their degree, their institutional affiliation. So the interior lining of this hood displays the colors of the institution from which the degree was earned. This red velvet or this blue velvet along the lining represents the PhD degree that all of our uh, uh, doctoral degree earners will be getting at this, uh, at this event. The length of the hood also varies depending on the length and the, 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 um, the degree of academic achievement that uh, the, the wearer has earned. So these are the traditional symbols associated with this doctoral hood. But what I'd really like you to do, and for each of our students to do, is, is really, I'd like to invite you to imbue this, this hood, this symbol, 
uh, with something that's maybe a little bit more meaningful to you. Right? This hood represents your history. So, so think a little bit about how you got started along the pathway to becoming a scientist. Maybe it was a teacher who first showed you that the scientific method could be used to understand something about the world that we had no idea about before. Maybe it was a relative whose work you really admired, or maybe you're the first in your family to receive a doctoral degree. Maybe you're the first in your family to receive a college degree. So every inch of this hood's length can represent the challenges that you faced over the course of your, your, your career and, and, and your efforts in achieving this goal. So it can represent each experiment that didn't work, each hypothesis you needed to revise because the data didn't support it, each time you had to come into lab late at night to keep an experiment going, the persistence and resilience each one of you had to show in order to keep your project moving forward in the context of a global pandemic. Probably this hood should be about 10 feet long for all of you. So. <laughs> in addition, the colors on the hood can maybe represent the community that supported you during this journey. It can rep represent your mentors, your colleagues, your friends, your family, some of whom might be here today to support you. And finally, once you're wearing this hood, it actually forms a continuous loop over your shoulders, telling you that, that your journey is not over yet and that you still have many achievements to come. So in this way, I think this hood represents not only your academic achievements, but also your journey, your resilience and perseverance, your community, and your future accomplishments. So again, I'd like to offer my heartfelt congratulations to all of our BIMS program graduates. We are so proud of what you've achieved, and we are so excited to see what you're going to do in the future. So let's congratulate our graduates again. So I will say, as part of the hooding ceremony, there, there tends to be a lot of stress about the hood and how it goes on. Um, it's, it's an oddly topologically shaped object. <laughs> and so I, I think the take home message should be, don't stress about it, you're graduating either way. <laughs> and think about it like horseshoes, like if you're close, it's okay, it'll be fine. So, all right. All right, so I've been asked several times over the last few weeks, how many students do you have graduating this year? And you'd think it'd be an easy question to answer, right? Um, we had a, about 45 students who graduated over the last year. Our students graduate at various times throughout the year. So unlike the medical students who are all graduating today, we have students here whose degrees were conferred last August and last December because our graduates finish their work when they finish their work. It's one of the challenges of graduate school that there is no set timeline or graduation date when our students start in our labs. We also have a number of students in our program who are earning not only a PhD, but an MD as well. They're in a joint program called the Medical Scientist Training Program. Some of those students choose to come and have their PhD hood conferred when they finish the PhD at the end of about their sixth year in the program. But others choose to come and join us the same day that they're earning their MD degree, and they get both degrees conferred on them, or both hoods on the same day. So you will see a couple of those graduates here with us today. So in the end, we actually had 50 students who were eligible to join us for this, pro for this ceremony today and uh, 27 of them have chosen to do so. It is the largest group that I can recall in recent history graduating from our program. So that means this ceremony is gonna take a little bit longer than it normally does, but we'll try to do it as efficiently as possible. Um, again, I wanna take a moment to recognize any graduates who might be joining us on Zoom. I can't see the list of people who are with us on Zoom, but we certainly shared the link with the graduates who 
um, were not able to join us here in person. Many of our graduates are all over the country now employed in, in industry and in postdoc positions, and some of them were unable to travel. But I hope that if you're on the Zoom, you know that we are celebrating your achievements as well. Okay, so now the logistics. I will call each of the graduates forward along with the person who you've chosen to do their hooding. In many cases, the person will be the mentor, but some of our graduates have other folks that they have uh, wanted to participate in this ceremony. I'm going to ask Dean Kibbe to hand you your ceremonial scrolls. We don't get real diplomas for these ceremonies, which makes things simple because we don't have to worry about giving the wrong diploma to the wrong student. <laughs> so these are ceremonial scrolls and your diplomas will come in the mail sometime eight to 10 weeks from now. So um, you'll have another opportunity to celebrate your achievements when they arrive. Once you have your hood installed and your ceremonial scroll conferred, you're welcome to return to your seats. This is a pretty informal affair, um, so there's, will be some time to snap action shots while this is all going on, but we have places set up downstairs for people to take more formal photos um, if you'd like later. So we're gonna try to, try to get through this pretty quickly, and there'll be lots of time for pictures later. Okay, are we ready? Excellent, Dean Kibbe, if you could join me in the front. Oh, this was the picture that Adrian was gonna use to show you how to put the hood on correctly. <laughs> We'll see who achieves the goal. <laughs> All right, our first graduate today is Abdullah Arbi Aboud, who earned his PhD in biochemistry and molecular genetics under the mentorship of Dr. Charles Farber, who's here to hood him. The title of Arby's uh, thesis was Leveraging GWAS, GWAS and the Transcriptome to Identify Potential Calls of Genes in Osteoporosis. Next up is Mercy Ngozi Best, who earned her PhD under the mentorship of George Bloom in pharmacology. The title of Mercy's dissertation was Breaking Barriers, a Quantitative Analysis of Axon Initial Segment Damage in the Neurodegenerative Diseases. Next up, we have Ashley Bolt, who is receiving her PhD degree in microbiology. Um, the, the title of Ashley's dissertation was The Meningeal Response to Traumatic Brain Injury. Ashley is one of our graduates who's also receiving her MD degree today. She will be hooded by her lab mate, Christine Zengler. Next up, we have Tatiana Clarissa Coverdell, um, who earned her PhD degree in pharmacology under the mentorship of John Campbell. The title of Tatiana's dissertation was a genetic, anatomical, and functional analysis of nucleus ambiguous neurons controlling digestive and cardiorespiratory functions. Next up, we have Sean Ryan Cuddy, who earned his PhD in neuroscience under the mentorship of Anna Cliff. The title of Sean's dissertation was Neuronal Innate Immune Signaling Supports Herpes Virus Reactivation. Right. 
Next up, we have Hannah Elizabeth Enerfelt, who again earned her PhD degree, PhD degree in neuroscience with John Lukens as her mentor. The title of Ashley's dissertation was short, so I'm going to read slowly so they have time to get to the front of the room. <laughs> Microglial signaling in Alzheimer's disease. Um, Hannah's going to be hooded by her lab mate, Ashley. Our next graduate is Patrick Fawnen, who earned his PhD in biochemistry and molecular genetics under the mentorship of Golan Mohi. The title of Patrick's dissertation was Genetic Deletion or Pharmacological Inhibition of PIM1 Impairs Breast Cancer Growth and something that is not on the slide. <laughs> Patrick, don't leave us in suspense. What was the and? Hmm? And? Metastasis. Metastasis. There we go. <laughs> All right. Next up, we have Alcade Fang, who earned her PhD in microbiology under the mentorship of Melanie Rutkowski. The title of Alcade's dissertation was The Gut Commensal Microbiome Remotely Regulates Mammary Tissue Mast Cells to Induce Metastatic Dissemination of HR Positive Breast Cancer. Next up, we have uh, Chin Li Gu, who I think I saw somewhere. Is Chin Li here? Maybe she disappeared. Last call, Chin Li. Okay. Next up, we have Christina Kupkova, who earned her PhD in biochemistry and molecular genetics under the mentorship of David Abel. The uh, title of Christina's um, dissertation was Epigenetics of Chronic Childhood. Again, something that's cut off the bottom of the slide. Under nutrition. <laughs> nutrition. There we go. Thank you. Next up, we have Bao T. Lee, who earned his PhD in biochemistry and molecular genetics under the mentorship of Golem Mohi. The title of Bao's uh, dissertation was The Role of PTPN1 in the Progression of JAK2 V617F Induced Myeloproliferative Neoplasms. back. We can back up a slide or two. All right. Please allow me to introduce Chin Li Gu, who earned the PhD in microbiology under the mentorship of Ulrika Lorenz. The title of Chin Li's dissertation was Treg Specific Deletion of the Phosphate SHP1. Next up, we have Jamie Lynn Null, who earned her PhD in microbiology under the mentorship of Andrew Dudley. Um, the title of Jamie's dissertation was Cancer Stromal Cells and Lymphovascular Invasion. I have a feeling there's more to that. 
that title too. I don't know why these are all cut off. Okay. Next up is Laura Odongo, who earned her PhD. Who earned her PhD in biophysics with Lucas Tam as her mentor. The title of Laura's dissertation was a study of endosomal factors involved in membrane fusion mediated by the Ebola virus glycoprotein. Next up is Anupam Prakash, who earned his PhD in experimental pathology with John Lucky as his mentor. The title of Anupam's dissertation was Cellular and Molecular Regulators of RBC Alloimmunization. Next up, we have Heather Michelle Raymer Young, who earned the PhD in Biochemistry and Molecular Genetics under Yuwa Wang as her mentor. The title of Heather's dissertation was DNA Secondary Structure Driven Genome, Genome Instability in ALS and Cancer. <laughs> Heather's going to be hooded by both her mentor and her sister, Dr. Amanda Raymer. Next up, we have Courtney Ray Rivet Noor, who earned the PhD in neuroscience under Alban Gaultier as her mentor. The title of Courtney's dissertation was How We Got Here A History of Depression and Future Therapeutic Avenues. Courtney is going to be hooded by her husband, Suhail Noor. Next up, we have Andrea Francesca McKimkim Salvador, who earned the PhD in neuroscience with Yoni Kipnis as her mentor. The title of Andrea's dissertation was Age Dependent Immune and Lymphatic Responses After Spinal Cord Injury. <laughs> Next up is Philip Segrin, who earned the PhD in pharmacology, working with Bimal Desai as his mentor. The title of Phil's dissertation was Regulation and Function of Mitochondrial Calcium Dynamics and Phagocytosis. Next up, we have Dane Thomas Sessions, who earned the PhD in microbiology, working with David Cachetas as his mentor. The title of Dane's dissertation was DRP1 and OPA1 Reciprocally Structure the Inner Mitochondrial Membrane and Electron Transport Chain in Lung Adenocarcinoma. Next up, we have Daria Skvazinska, who earned the PhD in neuroscience working with J.D. Kapoor as her mentor. The title of Daria's 
dissertation was anaerobic glycolysis modulates neuronal excitability. Next up, we have Clint Michael Upchurch, who earned the PhD in pharmacology under the mentorship of Norbert Leidinger. The title of Clint's dissertation was Targeting Oxidized Phospholipids by AAV Mediated Gene Therapy in Non-Alcoholic Fatty Liver Disease. style hats make the hooding so much easier. They're more aerodynamic or something. <laughs> Next up, we have Amanda Ward, who earned the PhD in biophysics under the mentorship of Lucas Tam. Amanda's the second graduate who's also receiving her MD degree today. The title... <laughs> The title of Amanda's dissertation was Understanding Hemagglutinin Cholesterol Interactions Important for Influenza A Infection and Zoonosis. <laughs> Next up, we have Zolly White III. <laughs> Zali is earning the PhD in experimental pathology. He worked under Adam Goldfarb. Um, Adam couldn't be here today, so Zali has given me the honor of um, installing his hood. The title of Zali's dissertation was The Role of Liver Kinase B1, and I should remember this because I was on his committee. <laughs> Erythropoiesis. <laughs> Next up, we have Doris Wong, who earned the PhD in Biochemistry and Molecular Genetics under the mentorship of Clint Miller. The title of Doris's dissertation was Defining the Functional Mechanism of FHL5 that Underlies Coronary Artery Disease Risk. Next up, we have Ying Zhang, who earned the PhD in biophysics under the mentorship of Dr. Huiwang Ai. The title of Ying's dissertation was Developments of Advanced Nanoluke-Based Bioluminescent Systems for Bioimaging and Assays. Next up, we have Scott Udall, who earned the PhD in pharmacology under the mentorship of Dr. Norbert Leidinger. The title of Scott's dissertation was Regulation of Macrophage Function Through Control of Lipid and Glucose Metabolism, Roles in Inflammation and Redox Homeostasis. Next up, we have Jinhao Zhang, who earned the PhD in microbiology, working with Dr. Hui Zhang as his mentor. 
The title of Jen Howe's dissertation was Pre-Malignant Development of BRCA1 Associated Ovarian and Breast Cancer. And our final graduate today is Christine Zengler, who earned the PhD in neuroscience. She's the third of the Lukens triumvirate who's graduating here today. Um, she is going to be hooded by Hannah Ennerfelt. They had a nice matrix worked out there. <laughs> the title of Christine's dissertation was Innate Immunity in Brain Development and Adult Homeostasis. Congratulations to all of our graduates. One of the bummers of being tied to the podium is that I didn't get to shake anybody's hand, so I'll try to hunt you all down at the reception to do that. <laughs> um, I have a few thank yous that I need to issue before we call this ceremony to a close. First, I'd like to thank Barry Collins and Dean Kibbe for joining us today to make remarks and for their support of our BIMS graduate programs. I want to give a huge shout out to Jennifer Hamlin, who's standing by the wall. <laughs> Jennifer is the BIMS administrator for our microbiology graduate program, um, and she's also a pro event coordinator who actually loves doing this. <laughs> and so we are so grateful to have her on our team. She was more or less the master organizer of this entire event. Um, she was supported in some ways by the rest of our BIMS admin team, who you all know and love, Mary, Carrie, Kim, and Bill. I think you all saw Bill downstairs. Um, please take a moment to thank them for all of the effort they invested in bringing this ceremony uh, here today. So. We have a small army of current BIM students who aren't graduating today, but who showed up on a Sunday morning to make sure that this ceremony went off well and everybody got where they needed to be when they needed to be there. Um, a particular shout out to Lexi Johnson and Swetha Anant who went through the, the training to be crowd managers. Um, you will recognize them by their badges and whistles, which I'm told they get to keep. Um, that, that training, while not difficult, was a chunk of time out of their day, and we really appreciate them taking the time to do it. Um, there are a number of other, sorry. <laughs> there are a number of other current BIM students who you may have run into on your transit over from the lawn. Um, Johnson Ung, Casey Boykley, Emily Bird, Paul Dell, Emily Dennis, Ian Liei, Andrew Paquette, Yogi Raghav, and Hong Pan Zhang all are helping us out today with logistics that make all of the behind the scenes stuff come off well so it all looks organized when we get here. So thanks to all of them as well. <laughs> Finally, I want to thank our students, their mentors, their family and friends who are all here today and who made this event special. Um, that concludes our 2023 BIMS hooding ceremony.